Good morning, Boundless Grace. How are you guys doing this morning? So you know we're trying a few new things here for announcements, for different stuff. So we're going to start every week now, just a, two minutes early, like 10, 28. And we're going to have a video that plays that kind of just brings up all the announcements. That way when we start to worship, we can just fully engage in worship. All right? So here we're going to kick off a little announcement from Jonathan. Good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? Awesome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Why don't you stand up and join us in worship? I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word brought 
brought peace within my heart. But I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air, but I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for being a God that we can believe in. Not a God that we may just uh, know some information or, or, or hear some instruction, but God, uh, someone that we can trust in. Someone who's acted, who's moved, who's recorded his steps throughout history so that we can see that you are the God who keeps us. You are the God who saves us. You are the God who's promised to, to deliver us. Father, thank you for letting us be here this morning. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. You are the only one worthy of our praise. We pray that you would bless this service and bless us this morning. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You all may be seated. Well, we are so grateful to have you here this morning. One real quick thing. If you are a visitor or a guest with us this morning, please take a moment. Fill out one of these connection cards. We would love to be able to connect with you. Um, get, record your visit and... Uh, be able to give you a gift in the back, answer any questions that you may have. We're just grateful that you would come and spend time with us this morning uh, in service. We're going to do a new song this morning. You guys like learning new songs? Amen. This is a this is a song that's come out recently. As I was praying through service this week, and I just been thinking about Mary and Elizabeth and and the message that they had received that they were going to have children it, whether it was Elizabeth who was far too old to have children or it was Mary who who had, who had never been with a man before they were going to have children and they had to trust God with that they had to trust that this message that they were going to get that, that this child was going to be exactly what God had promised and so that was just all my heart when I was praying through this this morning uh, praying through this this week and thinking about what worship was going to look like. And so this song is called I Trust or Trust in God. And uh, we're going to do the chorus real quick to kind of intro this for you. So the chorus goes like this. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Let's do that again. I trust in God. So, okay. The blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. What he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. As I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, all is at rest. 
Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. Y'all stand and sing with us. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him. How sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know. Jesus, 
Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him, Lord. time to prepare to hear from God's word.
Amen, amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. If you didn't notice, that was not Seth that was leading. That was Brother Jonathan. Amen. Uh, Brother Jonathan, thank you, brother, for uh, leading this morning. But didn't Maddie do a great job? Amen. It's good to see a, a dad and her daughter uh, up here singing. Uh, I know that Friday is our mother-daughter's uh, banquet, but it was nice to see the dad and the daughter up here singing together. Hey, I did want to say just a couple things about the announcements. First off, folks, the mother-daughter banquet is a very special uh, banquet. I absolutely love that evening. I remember the first time uh, that we had it, just walking in and just so amazed at what was about to take place. I had no idea. Uh, and it truly is a blessing. If you've not signed up, please sign up today, uh, and I hope that that's okay. Uh, but it, folks come and enjoy the evening of fellowship uh, and, and fun that we have with that. And also, take out your paper and pencil and write down this date. May 17th, 18th, and 19th are the dates for uh, Brother Alex McFarland. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to write that date down, but I also want you to invite people to come. Uh, folks, let's, I want us to have a full house as we come together to worship uh, and to have a, a worldview weekend here at our church. Uh, it'll be a great opportunity for us to dive into some depths about what's going on uh, in the world, but as it relates to God's Word. And so please make plans uh, to attend that event that is coming up in just a few weeks. Uh, all right, we're going to dive into our text today. We're uh, in the book of Luke. Uh, last week we looked at this reunion that took place between uh, Elizabeth and Mary, both of them being pregnant uh, and uh, them spending time together. But about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit came upon Elizabeth. And we spent some time talking about, folks, if you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit dwells with inside of you. Amen. Folks, that is so exciting to me to think that God's Spirit dwells with inside of you. At the time of your salvation, His Spirit comes to dwell with inside you. Folks, that is good news. Amen? Uh, we, uh, uh, I think I've, I've often said that we as Baptists get scared of talking about the Holy Spirit. Most Baptists like to, I've always said, you like put it in a paper bag and set it off to the side and kind of point at it every so often. Folks, that's wrong. It's, a, it's the power of God dwelling inside you. Uh, in fact, I, I think that we need to make sure that we are walking and living life through the Spirit of God that He has put within inside us. Also, the Holy Spirit looked at last week that the Holy Spirit that dwells within inside you will cause you to act differently than what you do. Uh, and it's, that's a good thing because I will tell you, when I act the way that I want to act, it, normally it's wrong. Amen? The Holy Spirit helps me not act the way that uh, I should. And then the last point last week was, folks, when Jesus came in the room, do y'all remember what he brought with him? Joy. When Jesus came in the room, John the Baptist leaped with joy inside the womb. When you've got Jesus in your heart, you've got joy. Amen. I won't make y'all sing that song again like I did last week, but we got the joy, joy, joy down in our heart. Down in our heart. It's down in our heart. And it's there to stay. It's there to stay. And folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed last week's message. We're going to continue this study. Now, uh, we're going to actually jump and talk about the, the, the birth of John the Baptist. Uh, and so we're going to uh, go from, we're going to read in Luke chapter 1, verses 57 through 66. Uh, and so out of reverence for God's word, will you please rise as we read uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 57 through 66. Now Elizabeth was full, uh, full time come to her delivered, and she brought forth a son. And when the neighbors and the relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to the circumcision of the child. And who uh, have, his, have called him by name of his father, Zacharias. Verse 60, his mother answered and said, no, he shall be called John. But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made a sign to the father uh, that he would have, what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and he wrote saying, his name is John. So they marveled, and immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. 
Then fear came on all who dwelt um, uh, around them. And all these things were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard kept, these, kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was on him. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, the time has come for the preaching of your word. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit, and Father, your spirit that dwells with inside your believers, ones that w- the one that we've already talked about today, may your Holy Spirit control my heart, my mind, and my tongue. Oh, Father, I pray that you would move in this uh, message today. That, Father, that you would touch people's hearts. Oh, Father, in that same Holy Spirit would bring conviction where conviction is needed and praise where praise is needed. That, Father, that you would move uh, in this place today to glorify yourself. And, Father, we ask this in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. A miracle. I want you to think about that word miracle. What that word means. Miracle. Oftentimes we throw that word around. And I think that we use it maybe sometimes too lightly. A miracle. I looked up the definition of the word miracle and it says an effect or extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural powers and is ascribed to a supernatural cause. So listen to that again. It says, the effect or an extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural powers and is ascribed to a supernatural cause. A miracle. The second definition said, such an event or event manifesting as the work of God. An event that is manifested as a work of God. A miracle. A supernatural act of God. A miracle. In this story right here, we have a, a, a couple of miracles that we could talk about. Elizabeth being in her old age, past the time that she should have had a child, well past the time that she should have had a child. And she becomes pregnant, and she delivers a son. We could talk about the miracle of Zacharias, the one that we've already talked about where he was burning incense, and all of a sudden... He was not able to speak. Folks, he went nine months without speaking. We can also talk about the miracle that just took place here when Zacharias wrote his name, and all of a sudden he could speak again. Isn't it interesting to think he went nine months without speaking? Can I tell you, for some men, that's pretty easy. Amen? A supernatural act of God. Can you think of a time when you've seen a miracle in your life? A supernatural act of God. When God has, has, has come into to your life and has done something in a supernatural way. I received a text this week from uh, Sister Rita. Many, many of y'all know Sister Rita. I absolutely love Sister Rita. She's not able to be with us, but she watches regularly uh, online. And Sister Rita sent me a text, and she said, Josh, I just have to tell you this story. I shared it Wednesday night, but I'll go ahead and share it again today. If you were here Wednesday night, you heard it. But she shares this story that said, she said she, she just had a surgery, this uh, surgery in the hospital, and she was in the recovery room, and her phone kept ringing, and it was a number that she didn't know. And she finally tells Ray, uh, her husband, go ahead and answer the phone. And so Ray answers this phone that is somebody they don't know and she could tell by watching Ray that something was really wrong and finally Rita's like just give me the phone and so Rita is in the hospital bed in recovery she takes this phone and she starts talking and said this lady was just sobbing on the other end of the line she come to find out that this lady was saying I want to find who was taking care of my dad my dad just passed away and I want to talk to the person that was just taking care of my dad 
This woman was crying, and Rita said, well, that's, that's, that's not me. I, I, I'm in the hospital myself, and I, it's not me that was taking care of your dad, but it sounds like uh, you need somebody to pray for you. Is it okay if I pray for you? And the lady who just started, through the tears, said, that's actually what I'm looking for is just somebody to pray for me. Amen? Can I tell you something? Sister Rita is a prayer warrior. If you want somebody to pray, you call Sister Rita. Amen? This random number just happened to call Rita, and all she needed was somebody to pray. A miracle, amen? Isn't that cool? But you know what happened? Later on, Ray takes that phone after that. Rita prays for this lady and prays for the situation uh, and, and tells the lady, hey, here's my number. You call me. Let's stay in touch, and I'll keep praying for you. And, and if you ever need prayer, you just call me because that's all I can do anymore is just pray. She hangs up the phone. A little bit later, Ray goes to get the phone to start calling people to tell them how Sister Rita's doing. And so he starts to use the phone, and the phone won't work. They had the phone turned off so it wasn't able to receive or send calls. But yet that lady's call came through. Amen? A miracle. A miracle. I love thinking about miracle whenever God shows up in a supernatural way. Just this week, I, I went to lunch with Brother Lance. Brother Lance and I were sitting there having a conversation, and all of a sudden, he tells me this story. And it happened a few years back, but it was with Sister Tammy. Sister Tammy, and I might get this uh, story wrong, and if I do, I apologize. But Sister uh, Tammy uh, had applied for a job and had a job and was going to start this job, and everything was really good. Everything was exciting. Now, there was a background check that had went on, and, and the investigator from the background check called and said, mm, sorry, we found something in the background, and there's a problem, and here's what it is. And they're like, man, I don't even know. And so uh, Lance kind of starts making some phone calls out to California back in, in Tammy's history and just trying to work through this process. And he, he spends some time calling uh, lawyers and, and judges and all this stuff, trying to find out what exactly happened uh, and trying to get all the details. He can't find anything. He goes back to the investigator and says, man, I've tried and tried, and I can't find out any information on it. The investigator says, hold on, let me do another check. Does another check, and it comes back completely clean. There was nothing wrong. The investigator said, I'm telling you, two weeks ago, I got all this information. And today, I get nothing. Amen? When God shows up, by the way, Sister Lance, I mean, Brother Lance, Sister Tammy, they were looking forward to that job. It was a blessing to get that job. And they thought that it had been ripped out from them. But God showed up and God showed off. Amen? A miracle. A supernatural event. I've had the privilege in my life many times to have people come and tell me stories about miracles that have happened in their lives. People, and some of you are here inside this church where you come and you say, man, we received news that, that I had cancer and we were praying about it. And the church was praying, and other people were praying. And then they come back just a little bit later and say, man, the doctors don't know what happened, but there is no cancer at all. I'm completely clean from cancer. Amen? I love it when people come and say, the doctors looked at me and said, we don't know what to say. What do we say? God showed up and God showed off. Amen? It was a miracle. I've had, I've had people come and tell me stories about how they weren't able to pay bills. And, and man, I've heard some amazing stories of how God has, has shown up when people have been so faithful to him. And then all of a sudden, God shows up in their finances and works a miracle inside their life. And they're like, the, the, in the natural world, this is not possible. But a supernatural event took place. I heard of a story of somebody... Uh, and man, I'm going to get the details wrong, but they, they literally needed like $1,000. I think it was like $998. And all of a sudden, a relative that they had never met mailed, mailed them a check for $1,000. The day that that bill was due. God shows up and God shows off. In our story today, what we're looking at, folks, this is a miracle it's a miracle, and I want us to learn some points 
uh, in, this, in, this, in this story that relates to miracles and how, uh, when they happen, how we should react and, and what we should do. So I want us to start in verse number 58. Look in verse number 58. It says, And when her neighbors and her relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy on her, they rejoiced with her. I want you to see what happened. A miracle happens to Elizabeth. The miracle was for Elizabeth and Zacharias. They're the ones that could not have children and did have a child. But did you notice what happened to the neighbors and the relatives? How did they respond? Come on, folks, it's in the scripture. They rejoiced. They rejoiced. And I want to specifically point that out because in the world that we live in today, there's so many people, if it's not about me, if it's not about I, if it didn't, if it didn't benefit me, then I don't want no part of it. it. We live in a world that is so self-consumed with self that when good things happen to other people, a lot of times we want to reject what happened or, or we might put on a smiley face, say, oh, that's good, and then you get in the car and say, I can't believe that that happened to them. Why won't God ever do anything like that for me? <laughs> Amen or oh me? Isn't it amazing sometimes the way we respond when a miracle happens to somebody else? Folks, this scripture teaches me that when a miracle happens to somebody else, I'm to rejoice with that person. Amen? I don't need to worry about what God has or has not done to me. I brag that my father showed up for one of his children. Praise God. It's, it's not about what happened to me. I'm reminded of what Romans chapter 12, verse number 15 says. I'm sure Bruce knows. Is Bruce here? I saw Bruce earlier. Bruce probably knows what Romans chapter 12, verse number 15 says. If you don't, I'll help you, brother. It says, rejoice with them who rejoice. Right? Folks, when a miracle happens in someone's life, we are to rejoice with them. The Father God shows up and he showed up for a family member. Don't you spend time whining about what God has or has not done with you. I say, you rejoice with that person. In fact, we should rejoice the same way as though it happened to us. You should rejoice with someone else as if it had happened to you. Amen? A miracle happens. God shows up and somebody comes and tells you a story. Folks, you need to rejoice with them. Be those neighbors and those relatives that are recorded here in Scripture. And notice what it said. They rejoiced with her. They rejoiced with her. Don't waste a miracle that God does with a negative attitude. Don't waste, don't waste a miracle that God does for someone with a negative attitude. Amen? Rejoice. Next, I want you to see what happened in verses 59 and 60. It says, it was on the eighth day that they came uh, to circumcise the child. And they would have called his name by his father, Zacharias. And his mother answered and said, no, his name shall be called John. I find this really interesting. And here's some reasons I find this, this text inter interesting. Because uh, we have no, no record that, that Gabriel told uh, Elizabeth what the child's name was supposed to be. We don't, we don't know that Gabriel showed up and said, hey, by the way, you need to call his name John. We know that Gabriel told Zacharias that his name was going to be John, but we don't know that uh, Elizabeth got that from Gabriel. So we also know that uh, Zacharias wasn't able to talk, uh, and so he didn't tell Elizabeth his name was going to be John. Uh, however, he could have written it, so it is possible during those nine months that he had written down, hey, by the way, we're going to call his name John, uh, and that's, that is possible. Or did she just say, we're going to call him John. And she didn't even know why she was saying that. She just said, we're going to call him John. We don't really know. But we know that she says right here that they're going to call his name John. And then look what happens in verse number 63. 
In verse number 63, uh, and so they asked Zechariah, said, what are we going to name him? Because people were really shocked. They're like, you really should be, na- his name should be Zechariah. And, and they're really shocked as she said, John. In verse number 63, look what it says. Uh, and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. His name is John. Can I tell you something? There are times whenever miracles come and miracles happen that don't make sense to us on what we're told to do. Follow, because the people around, they were really confused by all of this. Like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. There are times when God is going to work a miracle in your life and it doesn't make sense what he is telling you to do. And he's wanting to work a miracle in your life. For instance, y'all know the story of Joshua. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, right? And y'all remember what they told, what God told Joshua to do? I want you to, I want you to march around this city. And by the way, this is a city has walls, big, thick walls all the way around it. In fact, they said that chariots actually would ride on top of the walls. These are how thick these walls were. And they said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk around the, the wall one day, and then I want you to do a second day, and then a third day, then a fourth day. And then the, on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times, and then I want you to yell with a great yell, and the walls are going to fall down flat. Now, how many of y'all does that make sense to? Does that make sense? God had a miracle he was wanting to work, and he gave very specific directions for them to follow. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense, but the children of Israel did it, and God showed up and God showed off. How about this? A guy had leprosy. There's a guy in the Old Testament, and I think it's in 2 Kings. A guy has leprosy. And so he goes uh, to a prophet. He says, hey, I'm, I got leprosy, and, and it's really bad. I'm sick, and I, you know, I, nobody will touch me. No one come around me. And he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into the Jordan River, and I want you to dip seven times. Does that make sense at all? It doesn't. In fact, this leader really got mad. He's like, what? That old nasty river, I'm not going to go in. I can go wash somewhere where it's actually clean. I'm not going to go in that old dirty river. He ended up going into that old dirty river. He ended up dipping seven times. And do you know what the scripture says? Do you know what the scripture said? I know y'all are saying he was healed from his leprosy. That's not exactly what the scripture says. You know what the scripture says? His skin came out as if a baby. All the wrinkles and stuff were gone. Amen? Some of y'all are saying, I'm going to the Jordan to dip. (laughs) It didn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make sense that they would come up to a Red Sea, this big body of water, hold a rod over the top of it, and all of a sudden it just splits. That doesn't make sense. But sometimes when God is wanting to work a miracle, he's going to tell you to do something that doesn't make sense at all. But he's wanting to show up and show off so no one else can get credit for what's going on. It's all about God. Amen. It's like this. I, oh, I love this story. Brother Jim Chastine. Man, he had witnessed to his dad. If, y'all, y'all, if you didn't get the privilege of knowing Brother Jim, oh, he was an amazing man of God. But Brother Jim had witnessed to his dad. Man, he's broken over his dad broken over his dad and shared the gospel with him. And by the way, Jim Chastine would share the gospel with a a tree stump if if he thought he'd be saved because that's the way Jim was. But Jim Jim was sharing the gospel and his his dad rejected it over and over. He gets a call that his dad is on his deathbed. Now think if you were Jim Chastine, you get a phone call that your dad is just about to die. Hours away from death. You've been broken over your dad for all these years. And the first thing you want to do was run down and share the gospel with him one more time. And God said, no, you need to wait. He waited one day. God said, no, wait another day. Waited another day. God said, no, wait. And Jim's like, you don't understand. My dad, he's going to die. Wait another day. Waited a third day. God said, when you go share the gospel with him, he's going to cry like a baby. He walked in the hospital room, shared the gospel with him. His dad prayed to receive Christ and cried like a little baby. Amen. It didn't make any sense to Jim Chastain that God told him to wait. My dad is about to die. I want to go. Nope. You stay right there, Jim. All day long wanting to go see his dad. The next day, all day long wanting to go. But God said, no, I want you to wait. 
See, I tell you all of these stories to say there are times that God gives us, he, he wants to work a miracle in our life, and he's going to give you very specific directions. You follow those directions exactly, regardless of crazy or how they don't make sense to you at all. Do them anyway. It did not make sense that they called him John, but they did it anyway. And notice, as soon as he called him John, his mouth was loosed. As soon as he called him John, his mouth was loosed. He followed the exact directions God had given, and his mouth was loosed. You see, if they would have marched around that city six times, do you think the walls would have fallen? How about if he only dipped in the river five times? You know, I think five's good enough. Would it have happened? No. Folks, miracles, uh, whenever God wants to show a miracle, there's a, oftentimes he's going to give you the directions that don't make sense, but we want God to show up and show off, amen? So when God uh, gives us directions, folks, I'm going to say it, you must follow it exactly the way that God says to do it, amen? I'm going to throw this out. Oftentimes, you know what God wants you to do? And then you let yourself jump in the way and start twisting what God wants you to do. Don't do it. You've got to follow exactly what he tells you to do. It's so easy for us to say, oh, but I think I know what is best. But God said to do this. Oh, but I really think this. And so I'm going to blend that with this. And I'm going to blend them together. I think you could absolutely miss a miracle that God wanted to work by blending your opinion your thought and your desire with his wanting to work a miracle in your life. When God lays something on your heart, do it exactly the way he calls you to. Amen? Whew. All right, I'm about to start preaching. Let's look at verse 65 and 66 for what happens next. Verse number 65, it says, Then fear came on all those who dwelt around them and all those uh, sayings were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard and kept them in their hearts, saying, what kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was on him. Look what happened right there, folks. When God works a miracle in your life, it impacts people around you. When God works a miracle in your life, it impacts people around you. Can I tell you something? I think it is absolutely good uh, and honorable that when God works a miracle in your life that you start bragging on what God has done in your life. Not on what you have done, but what God has done. Amen? It impacts people around you. You notice what happened uh, whenever this, all of this took place. You notice what happened. And, and notice what it says there. Then fear came on all those who dwelt around them and all these things were discussed throughout all the hill country everyone started talking about the miracle that had taken place folks miracles that God might work in your life folks it benefits everybody who is a child of God it impacts us all how dare us to take those, those, those instances where God shows up and shows off and we just hide them and say, well, we're not going to talk about it. Folks, can I tell you something? I think that if God works a miracle in your life, you need to brag about what God has done in your life, right? Amen? And you need to share with others because, one, it builds them up. It builds their strength, uh, and they can rejoice with you that we've already talked about. And I think that you need to do that every time unless God gives you specific direction not to. God might say, hey, this is just between you and I. Don't tell anybody. This was just for you. But can I tell you, most miracles, he wants people out there talking about it because he gets the glory for it. Amen? So unless you get specific directions, folks, I encourage you. I encourage you to brag about it. And when if somebody comes up and tells you about a miracle God does, what are you going to do? These two got it. There might have been a few others. What are you going to do if somebody comes and tells you a miracle? Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Oh, folks, let's go on to the next point. Verse number 64. Look at what it says uh, in verse number 64. As soon as I can find it. There's 63. There's 65. 64. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed. And he spoke praising God. 
Folks, whenever a miracle happens in your life, you need to praise him. You need to praise him. Folks, can I tell you, you you don't only praise God when he works a miracle, but when he works a miracle, you praise him. Hey, let let me say that again. Y'all got to get this. You don't only praise God when he works a miracle, but when he works a miracle, you do praise him. Amen? You, you, when God works a miracle in your life, folks, that is such a special time for you to be able to spend some time in worship and praise of who God is and who God is and what he has done inside your life. I want to, I want to do this and I hope, I hope this makes sense, and I'm going to break down what uh, Zacharias says, and I want us to look at the next text, uh, and, and I want you to follow what happened. Uh, we don't know exactly if, if 64 is tied to 68, but it's real possible that those two verses are put together. But it says that, that Zacharias, and it uses the word prophesied, and so Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied. And look at what he says in verses 68 and 69, and he says, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up the horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. You notice what he starts with is thanking God for salvation. Folks, if you're a child of God, God works a miracle in your life. Can I tell you something? Before you start praising him for that miracle, you might want to go back and just thank him that you're a child of his. Amen? Praise God for the salvation that he has brought to you. Folks, the salvation that God gave me on November 25th, 1979 changed my life. I still to this day praise God for what he did inside my life that day. Folks, if he works a miracle in my life and I start to praise him, I need to start maybe with just praising him for the salvation. Look at what he says in verse number 70. He says, and he spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets and those, uh, no, the holy prophets who have uh, been since the world began. You see what he did right there? So he first praised God for salvation, then he praised God for his word, what his word is. Folks, can I tell you, this book right here is an amazing miracle in itself, amen? And did you notice that when uh, Zacharias starts to talk, he praises God for his salvation. And the next thing he says is, and what the prophet said. What is he saying? I praise God for his word. When was the last time you spent time praising God for the word, the word that he has given you? Look at what he says in verse 71 through 74. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of those who hate us to perform the mercies uh, promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Verse 73, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us, uh, to grant, uh, to grant us that we, uh, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Notice what he does in verses 71 through 74. Now, he just had this great miracle, uh, and in 71 through 74, he praises God for the protection that he has given them. He's praising God for the protection. Oh, folks, whenever God works a miracle in your life, that's a good time to praise him. But there's a lot we have to praise him rather than just the miracle that he brings in our life. How many of y'all praise God for the protection he gives you? In fact, how many of y'all praise God for the protection he has given you that you don't even know about? The other day, uh, this story just popped in my mind. The other day, I was running with a friend of mine, and we were coming up to a, a busy part of the highway. It's early in the morning, so there's normally not much traffic. And we're coming up to uh, Highway, it's uh, 71, I think, whatever comes out of Bentonville. It's Walton Boulevard. And uh, we're, we're coming up there, and my son just happens to call me. And I only have my watch, and so uh, I needed to talk to my son. So I, I, I answered it, and I stopped, and I talked to my son on my watch uh, there for just a minute. And then we take off running. And about the time we're getting to the highway, up in front of us, this car just slams on the brake and just starts sliding all over the road. And we're like, wow, that was weird. What happened? And I said, aren't we glad that my son just called? We literally would have been right there where that car started sliding. Praise God for the protection that he gives us, even when we don't know it. Look at verse number 75. He says, in holiness and righteousness before him. All the days of our lives. Now, verse number 75 goes with the end of verse 74. He says that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before uh, him all the days of our life. Folks, in the praise that he has and what he is saying in this prophecy that he is, Zacharias is saying, he, he talks about what a wonderful joy it is to serve God. How many of y'all have praised God for the wonderful joy it is to serve him? 
Now here's, now here's what I find very interesting. He says all of that. He says all of that before he gets to verse 76. Look at verse 76. And you, child, will be called a prophet of the highest. Folks, he does all of that before he gets to the point that he mentions the miracle. Do y'all see that? Whenever, whenever Zacharias is, is prophesying or praising God that during this time, he covers all of this other ground before he finally gets to talk about the miracle that took place. Folks, whenever God works a miracle in your life and you need to praise God, I think you should stop and say, I have so much that I'm going to praise God for and start praising God for all that he has done inside your life. Amen. What a great, great opportunity. He finally gets to the point where he brings up this child, where he brings up this child. Oh, folks, look at what he has done. Come on up, Brother Jonathan. Come on up as we're getting ready to close. I want you to think about this for just a moment. Look at all that has taken place in, inside our text that whenever we look at these miracles, that we rejoice with others, that we follow the specific instructions that were given, that the miracles impact others, but folks, that we should praise God. Now, I got a question for you. I want you all to think about this for just a moment. Maybe, maybe you don't have to. But if anyone here has ever had an amazing act of God, a, a miracle take place where it was something supernatural, supernatural event that took place in your life, that, that nature that in, in the powers of man cannot explain it. If you've ever had something like that, just stand up. I just want you to stand up. If you've had a miracle that God has done in your life that you can remember, a miracle where God worked a miracle in your life where you can say that was only God that did that I remember one time at a swimming pool whenever my son got hit in the head and he just floated to the bottom of the pool yanked him up out of that that water not breathing I don't know but that day a miracle took place none of us were medically trained and all of a sudden he starts breathing the, the paramedics came but he was okay I look back and say what a miracle you see, whenever you look around at all the people that are standing up that can say, you know what, I can testify that God has done a miracle in my life. Folks, just look around at all the people that are standing up. Praise God for the way that he works. Amen? Now, let me ask you this. Isn't it a supernatural work of God whenever he brings salvation into your life? Amen? Amen. Folks, if that's a supernatural work, then didn't God do that in your life? That's a miracle. I want us to do something. Everyone, everyone, please stand. If you will, everyone, please stand. I want you all to think for just a moment about what God has done in your life and the miracles that he's worked. Do you rejoice in those miracles still today? You see, it's so easy whenever a miracle happens. When a miracle takes place, and I'm reminded of one, I'm not going to talk about it right now, but I'm reminded of a miracle that took place in somebody's life here in the audience, and they came and they just praised God. But so, it's so often times when God works a miracle, we praise God for a week or maybe two, and then we let it slide. Folks, we need to praise God for the miracles that he has done. Amen? See, today, today, I want us to have a time where we just thank God for all that he's done inside our lives, the miracles that he's worked. And if you didn't have somebody that, you didn't have a miracle God had worked, then praise God for somebody else's miracle. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Maybe you're here today and you say, Josh, I want that miracle of eternal life. Maybe you're here today and you say, you don't know, well, you've never experienced a miracle, the miracle of salvation. If that's never happened to you, then come just talk to me during this time of invitation. I'd love to talk to you about what, what it means to go from a, a, a dead person to a live person. It's a miracle to go from lost to being saved. It's a miracle to go from eternity in hell to an eternity in heaven. Folks, it's a miracle. If that's never happened to you, then just please come talk to me. I want to just talk to you about what it means and what it looks like. You'll make the decision, but I want to talk to you about it. Maybe today you just want to come and thank God for the miracles he's worked in your life. Whatever God has laid on your heart, let us pray. Father, Lord God, have your way during this time. Glorify yourself, Father. Oh, may we worship you. May we be thankful for the miracles you've done. Move in our midst, and we ask this name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. I ask that you will move however God has led you. If you want to come to the altar and worship, please do. Walk
God is good, and all the time, folks, I'm thankful for the miracles that people have shared with me. I rejoice uh, with the ones uh, that have seen miracles, but folks, I think that God loves to show up and show off in a special way, amen, and I think that we ought to recognize whenever he does that, uh, because he is good to his children, amen, amen. God is good, oh, I've already said it, and all the time, join hands with your family as we sing Family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family. 